We can last weeks without food, but only days without water. So what happens when this water becomes too polluted to drink? Currently, a huge issue facing our freshwater resources is contamination by pollutants. So where do some of these pollutants come from? Imagine that you were standing in your washroom, taking it in in all its glory. Now I want you to think of those little bottles on your countertop, the cleaning products under your sink, and the drugs in your cabinet. By a variety of methods, once you are done with these products, they find their way into our natural water systems. These are then referred to as micropollutants, named after their small concentrations in aquatic systems. Even though they are present at low levels, their long-term effects on the environment and on human health are relatively unknown. For example, their effects have been linked to hormonal imbalance in animals. So would you want to ingest these micropollutants not knowing the long-term effect on your body? No. That's why my research is focused on water treatment plants, which aim to remove micropollutants from our drinking water. Specifically, I'm looking at ozonation, one of the most effective treatments for removal. This involves the use of ozone gas, as can be seen by the chemical symbol O3 on my slide. Think of ozone as the superhero of water treatment, removing micropollutants from our water and keeping it safe to drink for all the people. However, just like any superhero, ozone has a weakness. Its effectiveness is dependent on water quality parameters, such as pH, organic matter, and temperature. Water quality will significantly differ depending on the time of year. Therefore, seasonality can affect the ability of ozone to remove micropollutants from our drinking water. In my research, I aim to create a model that will accurately predict the removal of micropollutants in any season using ozonation. I will do this by collecting water samples throughout the year, providing me with large ranges in temperature, water, and pH. This will allow me to incorporate this into my predictive model, and hopefully water tree implants will be able to use it. So why is this important? Current models ignore the effect of seasonality. So treatment plants aren't able to use this at all points in the year. So this seems like the missing link between application and research models in water treatment plants. My model aims to bridge the gap between application and research, providing water treatment plants with a necessary tool that they can use to keep our water clean and safe, because ultimately, we all deserve clean water. Thank you.